Hey guys, this is Mike from Deepwood Force of Will. I'm coming at you with a deck profile, a pretty late deck profile, because this event was like literally two weeks ago. But uh, I figured right before the Moonlit Savior, I'll give it to you guys. Uh, this is the deck I brought to ARG New Jersey, and I got a uh, top eight with it. So let's get right into it. So, of course, like everyone else there, I was playing Reflect Child of Potential. Hey, really? The Matt, top eight. Oh, uh, well, that is the top Wouldn't eight. Matt. Yeah, take a take that in. This Matt's yeah, actually just, like just, oh, super beautiful. So nice. <laughs> okay. Now, put on the heinous Reflect Child of Potential. Uh, obviously, uh. obviously, this is the most consistent ruler in the entire game. Uh, not only for the draw effect, but also gives free plus 200s to certain cards named <coughs> Lancelot. And obviously the standing at the end of the turn is pretty nice. And then the other side, obviously, return something to hand, negate a spell, and search your deck. The search part is so relevant, because that's what won me my uh, round 5 match. Wow. Uh, the stone lineup is pretty standard for this kind of deck. Uh, this is mostly red-green, so you're playing with 3, 4... Magic Stone of Blasting Waves, not three. 34? What? Yes. <laughs> Four Blasting Waves, three Scorched Bales for some other small tech choices. Uh, two Moonshade, which you will see pretty much every turn one. You will start paying life as soon as you play it. It happened every time. And then one Little Red, the Pierce Stone, which you'll normally be calling as red, but if, you ever, if the time ever comes to call green or something else, you'll know when it's time. Uh, the main deck was... The standard good red cards, uh, we got four Guinevere, because Guinevere is like one of the best red resonators in the game, especially because she can toss some stuff into the graveyard that you'll see later, and you want things in your grave in this deck. Uh, to complement her, four Ruch Eggs, uh, very good card because you can search out everything else in the deck. Uh, three Flame Sprite, the Flame Sprite was a little iffy, it's actually the only resonator that differed from the first place deck. I was playing this exact same deck, except with three tech choices instead of three Flame Sprite. So, I'm a little iffy on this card. I'm still iffy after the tournament. It was good in some scenarios, but it also had some shortcomings, which I think need to be solved. And we got four Lancelot. Obviously, the best red resonator, the best red two drop the best, in the game. Yeah, best red two drop. It's just so strong, especially with some of the cards you'll see later in this deck. Uh, the fact that Reflect gives it a plus 200 means that you only need to add another 200 onto it to get that... 700 damage. To get that extra damage. But if you open with Guinevere and Necromancy of the Undead Lord on turn 1, and you have Lancelot on turn 2, you're basically guaranteed 1700 damage turn 2. Uh, three tech choices that were really fun were Sinbad. Uh, he's a very strong card in the match up in the mirror, and if your opponent is playing stuff like uh, main deck to with Fire Rat, which a lot of people were playing at this tournament, uh, all your addition resonators can quick cast, that's pretty relevant for most of the time. Uh, if you would draw, you can forego that draw. Instead of that draw, you can either deal 300 to a resonator, give a resonator you control plus 4 plus 4, or destroy target addition, which comes in really handy, obviously, for Robe with the Fire Rat. So he was very strong in this tournament. I wish I had seen him more. <laughs> uh, and then one tech 40 Thieves. Uh, it's searchable off of Rook Egg. Uh, it's what you use to put your rapid growths and necromancies into the grave as fast as possible. Uh, it's just good. You'll see it when you need to see it. And then four Cthugas. That heinous, heinous, poorly designed card that took too many games. Starting with the Cthuga train by incarnating Rook Egg, searching a Rook Egg or searching a Cthuga with the Cthuga Rook Egg already in hand gets really, really gross. And it's just a very poorly designed card, and I loved it. <laughs> and then a couple of tech choices one Snow White. Um, greatly I, poorly designed. <laughs> uh, I ended up siding Snow White out of pretty much of every single matchup I had just because. It's good in the early game when you're trying to... It's good in game ones when you're getting early game board presence, but once your opponent knows you're playing red, this thing becomes super irrelevant. And then one Susanoo, who actually I didn't see too often today, and I didn't really need him too often, but every time there was a Gwyber, I think I found some way to put him in my hand. So he was really relevant in that regard. Uh, just obviously such a good card with dragons running rampant.
That's all the resonators. Uh, the rest of this is all spells. There are no regalia in this deck. Uh, four thunder. <laughs> this thing is just gross. Uh, obviously, your early game board presence is nice. And if you end up getting into the late game, say you're in time and you need extra damage, Reflect searches it out, and you can just hit them with this to kill them for to get game. It's really dumb. It's how I won my game five. My match five. Oh my god. Uh, the namesake of the deck that people have been referring to this as like Reflect Romancy, Necro Reflect. Uh, Necromancy of the Undead Lord is just super solid. If it's in your graveyard, you can play it on a Resonator once it's summoned for free. Because it's a free 200. And on Reflect 200, is a plus 400. And Lancelot loves plus fours. So these things, in addition with Lancelot and Reflect, are really, really scary good. This lets you put in so much damage in the early game. Your opponent is super overwhelmed by the time they're on there. It's a very, very strong card. Uh, two Flame King Shout. It's a good card. Honestly, uh, it came up a few times when I was playing uh, like the Alice's World decks. Uh, I was playing the Pumpkin Witch OTKs. Flame King Shout is very relevant in those matchups. A lot of time you side it out when you're playing more control-heavy matchups or just something that has bigger minions than you can kill with this. But it did its job when it needed to. I enjoyed it. A card that surprisingly did a lot of work is, was Ame no Habakiri. Ame no Habakiri uh, gives something plus four, plus four, so Lancelot loves it. And if your creature would deal damage to another opponent's, to your opponent's monster, uh, it deals that damage to your opponent as well. So you can just break through boards really easily. If you face off against a Gwyber and you have a Lancelot with this on it, the Lancelot will swing at the Gwyber for seven, your opponent takes seven, and if they block with the Gwyber, they take another thousand, you get rid of the Gwyber and you get rid of Lancelot, and you've dealt 17 to them. This card put in so much work towards the end of the games that I was face that I was playing. Uh, if you if you need extra chip damage, it's so strong. And the last card in the main deck was two Rapid Growths. Same basic rulings applied from Amin Habakiri, but it's just more damage you can get from the grave. Another plus four, plus four, more Lancelot synergy. This is basically just Lancelot the deck. Pretty much. And then the sideboard was kind of tailored to a lot of decks. Uh, obviously against Alice's World you're going to want more Susanoo, so I sided in the second. Uh, obviously with Rock Egg you see this whenever you need to. It's so good. Uh, two Death Scythe for, and two Barrier of Shadows. Both of them apply to the same deck. Uh, this is an easy way to counter the uh, Regalia decks. I faced Val 2.0 side of these in, had this when I needed it, had this when I needed it, won the game because of it. So, obviously they do their job. Through Rapid Decay, when you're facing off against your other aggro decks, uh, kind of the same with Robo the Fire Rat, obviously most of the aggro decks are going to be red, so this is just kind of just stop them in their place. This is to get rid of Lancelots in the early game. It, they're both really good cards. If Rapid Decay was an instant, I think it would be way better, and I would have felt way better using it. But uh, it did its job the way it was supposed to. I have no complaints about it. And Robin Fire Rats busted. In that in that in that uh, mirror match I had for against the first place guy, uh, it all came down to who kept the Robin the Fire Rat on the field for the longest. And then last tech choices: two Law of Silence because you're playing the green. You can shut if you're playing an aggro deck and you're playing green, you can shut your opponent out of a turn. So it's basically like you're playing Alice's World for two mana because your opponent can't play anything. And then you just go for the next turn, and you'll probably win because of that. And then two Zeeks for the Alice's World matches. Canceling Adam Brawlies, canceling Wybers, all is really, impor really important. Uh, against Yamada, you can shuffle your opponent's deck back in, but I didn't play any Yamadas there. Nobody was brave enough. And that is the entire deck. That is what I brought to New Jersey. That's what got me this mat. That's what got me my fourth place finish. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I have like nothing else to say about the deck, because this isn't a deck by my own creation. Um, but it's the one that I piloted at the event, and I took it to a pretty solid matchup. Uh, yeah, I have no basically nothing else to say about it. It's a good deck. Try it out while you can. Uh, right before the Moonlit Savior comes out, obviously. Everybody's going to be hyping up these new decks. But this is a deck that's still very playable in that format. Kaguya could give it some trouble, but other than that... It's a really good deck. Try it out yourself. And this is Mike. And Scott. Signing out. See you.